Hi everybody, this is my post for day five. And I actually took some notes because um, the material was familiar, but then after reading all the posts and everything, I was so inspired. You guys are doing, you're part of my language, you're kicking ass because you're asking tons of good questions. And even if you don't even believe that they're good questions, the fact that you're questioning something shows that you are trying to grow and that your, your inner being, your inner voice, the universe, whatever you want to call it, you know, Abraham, um, all the different people that speak on these topics, all the different teachers that we have, have different terminology, different names and different things, but it's pretty, pretty close to a lot of the same stuff. So a couple things I wrote down. First of all, as it seems to be, you can look for these posts usually towards the end of the day because I don't know, I've just been inspired and guided to this is where I show up. I'm, I'll, do, I'll be the, the cleanup batter, as they call it in baseball. So, um, you know, this touches on a lot of things that, a, an expression that travels across all realms of philosophy and of uh, religion and spirituality, whatever, where people say everything happens for a reason. Now, my experience and belief and perspective big word that I'm looking for is that sometimes that reason isn't even always about us in particular for example let's say I dropped my keys this morning as I'm getting into my car and I had to stop and pick them up when I stopped and picked them up I spilled the coffee that I was carrying on my shirt so damn I had to go inside and change my shirt and it cost me five minutes of time I got in my car and went about my way and went to the store now, had I not dropped my keys and spilled the coffee and had to change my shirt, I might not have made the guy who was trying to make a right hand turn wait that extra three seconds, which then he may have bumped into a car as he was then getting on the road, which then swerved and ran across the road and hit a little girl who was walking down the sidewalk. Spill my coffee on my shirt in that case didn't have anything to do with me but i believe from my perspective that sometimes that happens that the universe or god or god's universe or whatever you want to call it uses us for the good of itself itself is us all of us because we are all connected and we are one so therefore in that example i'm protecting myself by not hitting that girl because i am her we are all connected now, that also brings to mind an interesting point, which is, if I hurt you, I'm hurting me. Now, it's easy to understand that if I feel anger for you, and you don't see or feel it, the only person, obviously, that it's hurting is me. But if I actually do hurt you, and you feel it, by hurting you, I hurt myself. And that goes across many boundaries, or excuse me, not really boundaries, that goes across many platforms of sciences, philosophies, religions, and everything else. So, um, another point. Here's the thing, you guys. <laughs> Just try to remember this. You know, we, we come up with a lot of questions, and, and when people talk about children and the things, the trauma that happens to them and everything else, um, I think it's best, especially we're only day five into a long course, and... Just try maybe to say, look, we don't have to de we don't have to untwine untangle all of the divine mysteries of the universe all in one day, one week, or one course for that matter, or even in one life. Let's focus on some of the stuff that we can do now, that's happening now, so that we can affect our life now, and even as we move forward, so that we can make our lives better in the lives of others. Now, as it comes to others. One of the things when you, if you're new to this, and this is just a, a loving, like I'm giving you a hug warning, I guess for lack of a better word. But as we learn this stuff, one of the things that we do is we get really excited and we go to the people who have no experience or knowledge or desire to know these topics and we try to explain to them because we're happy and we're excited. We want to share something with them that is wonderful and beautiful that's adding to our life. And... They look at us like we got three heads and then we can't explain why we really don't have three heads. And then it kind of deflates your balloon of excitement and love and passion that you were feeling. So, you know, I've said before, 
Don't share your dreams with those who don't share your dreams, especially if you're not quite equipped yet to explain your dreams. So people, you don't have to explain to everybody around you. Guess what's going to happen is they're going to see your happiness and your peace and your freedom and your love. And that is going to attract them to you to where they'll ask you questions as opposed to you running and telling them in, in network marketing, we call it puking all over people with information. So just a thought, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, something to be cognizant of because of course it's a beautiful thing and you do want to share and sharing helps you. But the people that are closest to you can sometimes be the biggest resistance you feel, which then can kind of, it's kind of when somebody kicks you in the balls, because you're happy about something that takes the wind out of your sails. Pardon my coarseness, but that's just me. So anyway, um, one thing too, I notice a lot is that people say, you know, I'm getting there. Or I'm going to get there or I'm working on it, but they say, I'm going to get there. Guess what? You're there. You're there because you're here. You're already here. What's happening is you're not getting somewhere or moving towards something. You are already there, which is here. What you're doing is peeling off the layers of fog and uh, the, the curtains and veils that we have placed upon ourselves and society has taught us to see blindly through. So what you're doing, you're really right here. Okay? But you are learning and growing and expanding, but you're not going towards something. You're already there, which is here. So um, I wrote down a ton of stuff, but I don't think I'll hit it all. Um, you know what? I One thing too, by the way, I, mentioned, I meant to mention this in the previous post. I love the way Abraham, when they explain how we chose to come to this. And this is my... I was talking about this with somebody that, uh, in a romantic sense, how, you know, people talk about soulmates. I'm not even going to get into that, but they talk about, you know, your, your soulmate. Well, I don't know. Like I said, I won't go into that, but here's the thing I believe. I was talking to somebody about this because I had a notion that maybe, like, when we come from source, we agree to come here. And if there was somebody or a, a, a part of the energy that we came from that we wanted to reconnect with, we may have even agreed. But I think like it's almost like we got shot down here in a little space ball whoosh, and put into the womb. And we knew when we were coming here what we were going here for and what we we're going to do. And we said, yep, I accept the mission. Okay, Joe, but are you sure? Because you're going to have to go through some stuff before you get there. Yep, I'm good for the mission. Okay, but here's the catch. You're not going to remember any of this, where you're from, until you come back. So you cool with that? Oh, of course I'm cool with it. And then we get here and, man, we don't know anything. We're This is our first time in our mind, whether it is or not. And we don't know where we came from, where we're going. We have faith and we believe. And we may know, but... I don't know too many people who can say they remember shooting down here. So, and I'm not saying that that's not possible. I'm just saying I don't know anybody that does. So, um, it makes this easier to understand and accept as we're going through this. Say, I chose this. I chose to be here. And, and the universe or God or whatever you want to call it, I don't believe punishes anybody. I don't think that, like it, Abraham was talking about karmic debt. From previous lives or people use the word karma to explain if you're mean to somebody yesterday something bad is going to happen to you today or if you weren't nice to them they're not going to be nice to you that's just reciprocation but we are all recipients of the love of god's universe period okay but if we don't feel we deserve it, we will repeat lessons over and over again until we finally get past whatever it is we need to learn so that we're ready to accept. It's kind of like walking up to the fountain, the soda fountain with the cap on top of the, of the cup. And you're pushing <laughs> on the lever and there, everything's spilling out all over you and you're making a big mess and your cup is still empty. And you're sitting there doing it over and over and over again until finally something jogs you to say after seven or ten times of doing this or however many times you got to go through it and you go, oh my God, if I just take the lid off, 
fills up. It's refreshing. Wow, that's awesome. And I know how to do it again and again and again now. So we transcended from that which we needed to learn. So um, yes, this was a long post because I was really excited to see all the growth that's taken place here and all of the interaction and everybody's love to help each other and, and taking responsibility. You know, I think that's awesome. That's awesome, you guys. So with that, this is the end of my post for today. It should be enough for about five days, but I love you all. Be blessed. Take care.